Hello, girls and boys. My name is Kala Ma'at Amin Ra. I prefer to call you star seeds because your skin is actually made of stardust, but that's for another subject. And it's such an honor for me to bring something to your attention. What I want to speak about today is the most important organ inside of your body. This organ controls all of your day-to-day, -day, second by second activities. This organ that I'm speaking about is the brain this object right here. Now, without further ado, let me get into the major parts of the brain. And one of the first parts that I want to get into, into, into this brain is, is down at the bottom. You see this right here? This is what you call your cerebellum. That is your cerebellum. Now, let's just speak about the, the some of the functions that the cerebellum actually, actually do. The cerebellum is, is responsible for walking, posture, the way you the balance for coordination, it's responsible for eye movement, and it's also responsible for speech. As I already explained to you, your cerebellum and what that controls as far as speech, coordination, uh, eye movement. Again, all of these right here are sending uh, chemical, uh, what you call chemical messages, neurotransmitters that are uh, sending messages to these areas so that way that they can perform what you want it to do. So when you want to walk forward, you're, there is a electrical impulse. First of all, it's the thought. The thought is the electrical impulse, the thought that you want to walk forward. Then that signal is sent to that is sent to a neuron. That message is carried from the neuron to another neuron. So that way your foot can move forward in front of you. Now, all of this is happening, you say, in a split of a second. You see how fast you can walk. You see how fast you can move your hands. You see how fast you can move your eyes from left to right, up and down. This is how fast that communication has happened between your thought and the, and the and electrical impulse that is being sent to the, the, the neuron to send that message that deems to fit your movement at that time or whatever you are doing. You have your cerebellum, that sits here at the bottom. And then you have your temporal lobe that sits right here. Now, your temporal lobe is very important as well. So your temporal lobe is on both sides of the brain. This area, which is inside your skull, is near your temple and your ears. And your temporal lobe pulls in auditory information, sounds from the outside. It manages your emotions as well. So based off of what you hear, so you you react. So sometimes you hear good music, you start laughing, you start, I mean, you start dancing, you hear something funny, it makes you laugh. This is where your temporal is pulling in those information and then you are expressing off of what you are hearing. Whether it, if it was something sad that you heard, then you expressed a sad emotional feeling. If it was something uh, uh, funny that you heard, you expressed a happy or, or laughter uh, emotional feeling. So this is what the temporal lube does. So now we move over to your parietal lobe. Now the parietal lobe is responsible for pulling in sensory information as far as taste, smell, sound, sight, you know, all of that is being pulled in through your parietal lobe. And then it's coming from your peripheral nervous system to your central nervous system. Your central nervous system is your brain, spinal cord, and eyes. That is being pulled into there. And then it's being pulled in so that way that you now know how to react in the environment. So in case you smell something that you didn't like, you didn't like the way it smelled. Oh, I didn't like the way that smelled. If you saw something that didn't make you, that make you saw a cat or a squirrel that got hit by a car and it made you feel some type of way, or you heard something. Again, this is what your parietal lobe, it pulls in all of the outside and your surrounding information even with your body and your environment, so that way you can know how to move around your environment. This is what your parietal loop does. Now, the next one is your occipital loop. Your occipital. Now, anytime you hear occipital, you should automatically think of visual, what you see, optic nerve. This is what you, this all has to do with vision. Your occipital loop, uh, it sits in the back of your head. As you can see, this is where your, your occipital lobe, your occipital lobe sits back here on the back end of the brain. And the occipital lobe deals with vision perception, including color and the form and the shape and how things are moving. This is what your occipital lobe does. This is deals directly with vision, movement, color, and 
and your perception of how the world is. Now, we go over to your frontal loop. Now, let your frontal loop and your cerebellum. Now, your cerebellum is at the bottom of the brain, at the top of the spinal cord. Your frontal loop is at the very top of your brain in the front. That's your frontal lobe. Now, that, that frontal lobe doesn't start developing until 18, 18, 17, 18 years old. And this frontal loop deals with critical thinking, higher cognitive skills. This are So now let me give you an example. As opposed to, let's take someone that's working every day, that's making 40,000 a year, 60,000 a year, right? We all know, okay, that's some money, right? Now, that that's what your cerebellum is compared to your frontal lobe, a billionaire. Your frontal lobe is a billionaire. Your cerebellum is a blue collar, hardworking individual working every day. But your frontal lobe, if that's healthy and, 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 and functioning properly, that's a multi-billionaire. That is someone that can have anything his or her heart desire because this is fully developed. When the frontal lobe is developed, you can think and process information completely different. You're not reactive. So let me give you an example, Starcy. Let's say someone in the class says something to you you don't like, okay? You can either say something back to them that you may think that they don't like, or you can have a higher thinking. You can say, you know what? Whatever I did to you to make you say that to me, I apologize. And I hope that you have a wonderful day. That is what your frontal lube does. And if damage is taking place with your frontal lube, you don't think that way. You actually think the opposite. You want to go tick for tack, tick for tack. You want to do that. But when your frontal lube is developed properly and functioning the way it's supposed to function, you always have a better higher perspective of life and the things that you should be doing in life. So I thank you, Starseeds, for, for participating in this short but quick brief uh, segment regarding um, the brain. This is the most important tool. I look forward to doing more videos so that way that I can share this with you. But again, I hope that I was able to assist you and help you out in, in, in any which way I possibly can to bring memory back to you to let you know how important that this vital organism right here that you are you that you walk around with every day. That you you should know how important and how valuable and how and how vital that this organ is, that you should take care of it, that you should love it, that you should know how it works and what it needs to work properly. Thank you very much and you have an amazing day.